Welcome to Blender Guru, where beginners become pros. Today we're going to be looking at edge loops and how you can use edge loops to define your shapes um, in relation to subsurface modifier. So basically this is a quick tip for a subsurface modifier. This is the canon we've been working on and as you can see I've gone in and cleaned up a lot of this to make it easier to see. We'll turn on ambient occlusion. I can see that it adds a little bit of shading. Ambient occlusion is actually the effect that as you get into corners things become darker which helps you see the shapes and the forms better on the cannon. Um, I'm also going to turn on medcaps. I'm going to switch to a nice red color. <coughs> Makes it easier to see. <coughs> so again, you can see that some of these, these shapes are very sharp and other ones are kind of rounded. Here it's fairly soft and rounded. Um, these, these bands were apparently originally um, wrapped, like pieces of metal wrapped around the cannon to keep it from exploding. And then as cannon technology progressed, they actually made molds of a cannon, but left these rings in there. So these rings, it's one solid cast piece, but these old rings from the original cannon stayed in the cast. And as that cast has progressed um, from casting to casting, the, the rings themselves are blurring out and getting softer. It's kind of interesting. And eventually we just got rid of the rings altogether. So, we're going to start by just deleting all this. And I'm going to go and set the uh, 3D cursor to 000. So it's right in the middle of everything. I'm going to add a cylinder. I'm going to press T to bring up the tools over here. I'm going to make the depth of the cylinder 6. I'm going to make the end caps nothing to get rid of them. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And then I'm going to set smoothing to uh, shading to smooth. And here we have just a plain ordinary cylinder. And if you look really carefully, you can see that it's flat a corner and then flat and then a corner. If I get rid of the smooth, you can really see it much more easily. These are corners here. It doesn't look very good. So to counteract that, we hit uh, shift spacebar, um, we use a modifier. And there are two possible modifiers. Multi-resolution, which is used much more in sculpture, and subsurface sur subsurface sub division, which is used more in box sculpting, which is what we're doing right now. So I'm going to turn that on, and you can already see it starting to smooth out. And if I increase the number of subdivisions, it'll become smoother and smoother and smoother. But if you look up here, the number of triangles is now 65,000, which is a lot. Now it's only 16,000. So I usually work at, at three subdivisions. Um, and if you go to simple, it's making boxes within boxes here, which is just about useless. I don't know of any good reason to use simple. Clark's Mill is what we use every case I know of. If any of you know why or have a use case for simple of the subsurface uh, modifier, please let me know in the, in the notes under YouTube. I would really like to know the answer to that. So this is the view. This one here is how many go into your render. It's common for people to set the view to three and then maybe set the render to five because the as the number of triangles goes up, the, 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 the uh, 3D viewport here tends to slow down. My computer's fairly quick, has a nice graphics card, but if you have an older machine, this can be, or you have very complicated geometry, this can be very important. So, but I'm happy. I think it looks good with three. I'm going to leave it at three. And we're going to go back and um, full, full view mode, set it back to smooth. And so now, it, if you see here, there are no more of those really funky uh, edges, funky degrees of bending. So now I'm going to hold down tab, move the mouse over to edit mode, and release tab. So now we're in the 3D edit mode. I'm going to press Control R. This makes ring loops. I'm now going to make five ring loops. And you can see you can move the ring loops. 
I'm not worried about that right now. I'm going to press the right mouse key and we have our ring loop set. The next thing I'm going to do is select three of these edge loops. This is uh, Control, Alt, right mouse on the line. So that and then you can just see I clicked through to the other side. I don't want to do that, so I'll click it again to get rid of that selection. And there. Now I have my three edge loops. I will now hit S for scale. But as you can see, they're moving away from each other, and I don't want that. So I'm only going to scale in the Z and Y cor uh, uh, directions. And to do that, I hit Shift Z. And now, that was wrong. Uh, Shift X. Yeah, there we go. Shift X did it. Now you can see it scales in those directions, which is what I want. And check here. You can see that it's scaled evenly. Ah, oh, look at that. I missed some points, some vertices. Um, I would normally, well, we'll do it. Control Z, undo what you just did. Find those buggers. There's one. There's one. Oh, that's because I, I accidentally selected this long ways thing and then deselected it, so I deselected those points. Easy mistakes to make. Okay, so we'll do the same thing again. Now we just hit scale, shift X, and we scale it up. And now you can see that if I tab to object mode, that we have something that looks like, I don't know what, a colon or something. Um, and if I do shift space and I uh, make it so you can't see, so basically unapplying the, the subsurface, you can see that we have very sharp edges. And when I make it so you're using it again, it gets very soft. So what do we do when we want our mesh to have sharp edges? on maybe some of them. And pro there are many different solutions, but one of the best is to add another edge loop. This is Control R. You can see the edge loop here. And I'm going to slide it right. You can even touch them, although if you remove doubles, it will remove those too. And nothing is perfectly sharp. Even a razor blade has a rounded edge at some point along the edge. It's just microscopic. So I'm going to back them off a little bit. And now I'll go to object mode, and you can see I now have this nice sharp edge. And it looks pretty good, and it also has this nice round, rounded form. I'm going to press uh, A to deselect everything. You can see it's nice and sharp. It gives you this nice highlight, which is really important. If the edge were perfectly square, the highlight wouldn't be there. It doesn't look so good. So another way we can do this, going back to edit mode is we'll select, and again, I did that same mistake. Um, we'll select all of these. And then you can do this with a shortcut, but just so you know what they are, we can go to vertices and um, split or separate. Separate gives you a new two separate objects. Split just separates them within one object. So I'm going to use split. And now when we go to object mode, you'll see that it's a perfectly sharp line. Okay, so we've seen here a few different ways to get these edges. Here it's been actually separated into two different objects. As you can see, I can grab it. It's two separate objects. Here we've added extra edge loops and brought them up close to force the shape to be the way we want. And this one is just plain normal. So here we're going to do yet another way to do this. We'll select this. We'll select the edge loop here, and now I'll hit Control, uh, what do I want, uh, E for edges, mark sharp. So now it's been marked sharp. Now we can go to here, and I'm going to turn this a little bit sideways so you can see it better. And we'll bring this up also. Okay. I can see that edge. As I do this uh, crease, you can see 
and then it goes up and meets the edge. And this can be pretty handy. It allows you to kind of have a variable in between. But if you're exporting this to other um, programs like Maya, for example, this this uh, mean crease, the weighting here, may not export very well. And using edge loops will almost always export correctly. So that's something to keep in mind. Edge splitting should always work. I don't know how other well other programs handle that, but as far as I know, that should also work. So here we have an end. I'm going to again select the edge loop. I'm going to extrude and scale. And I'm doing this because if it's not done this way, you'll get very strange um, deformities in, in the color of your material. So this is the proper way to, to do an edge as you go around a corner. The n-gons and the triangulation and whatnot, they won't look good. So just to take a look at what we have so far. We've got this kind of rounded one using creases. We have this one that's sharp using edge loops. We have this one that's super sharp. And you'll notice this band of white, reflected light. And here there is no band of white. That's a big problem with using um, separate to, to do that sharp edge. It doesn't look good. And if we wanted to, we can make this one sharper by selecting these edge loops and sliding it all the way over. Slide vertices. Slide, shift V, there we go. But it won't be as sharp. So shift V, yeah, shift V. It's a shortcut. Oh, I had a little mistake there. I don't know what that's about. Control Z to undo, Control Z to undo. Oh, the edge loop didn't continue around here for some reason. Huh. Must be that selection failure I had earlier. Anyway, we won't worry too much about that. But, as you can see, I think you've learned by my mistakes here as much as by my instruction. Um, but what I point out is how rounded this is now. It's very rounded. And again, if we want to fix that, we can do that by adding an edge loop inside and an edge loop outside. And now if we go back, you can see that I sharpened it up and made a very nice edge. And a final way that this can be done is you can go to your modifier stack and you can go to your edge split. And now you can see this has become very sharp. An edge split is a lot like separate. And it can be done by uh, degrees and, and other methods. I don't use this much because one, it will get all the edges. And often you don't want that. You don't have any control over it other than the degrees of what gets split. And you see it here splitting in the middle and all these little because of this angle here, because it's such a low angle. And there, it's just splitting in the middle point. So anyway, I don't use that very often, but it is available if you have a, a use case. So that concludes my little tip for today. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.